I'm Mike, and today let's talk about the... No, no, no. <laughs> Actually, I'm Mike. I <laughs> uh, guess? Well, I mean, I'm a person, and you're just like a website. I'm a website made up of people, sometimes paid by the livestock industry. Oops, I wasn't supposed to say that. Yeah, and so I'm going to destroy your recent BS article. Seriously, have you read it? Bring it on, Mick. Oh, no, you did not. Seriously, it's Mike like Michael. All right, let's do this, starting with the article. 12 times a vegan diet wasn't good for you or the planet. I normally wouldn't give an article like this the time of day, but it actually brings up some subjects that I haven't really covered that much yet. So let's get into it. Number one, fake meat contains iffy filler ingredients pointing to a processed mold. Want to talk about iffy fillers? How about pink slime in meat products because of its ammonium hydroxide and production process in general, it is banned for consumption in the EU, but in the US as long as it's, you know, 15% or less of a given product, it's okay. Oh, and virtually all meat contains poop. And seriously, trying to make us think that mold is gross? You're aware of how cheese is made, right? Now for number two, coconut oil is mostly saturated fat. Now, I'm not a proponent of coconut oil, but this is completely upside down, directly from the American Heart Association's website. The main source of saturated fat in the Western diet is animal products, pointing to meat and dairy. So if you are legitimately concerned about saturated fat, going vegan could be the best option for you. Number three, the benefits of soy are overstated. The amount of soy used in many studies is much higher than most people consume in real life. Citing Dr. Hyman, low carb doctor himself, with books such as Eat Fat, Get Thin. Quick reminder, low carb diets increase all cause mortality. But soy has earned its health title. From this meta-analysis of eight studies, they found that the people that ate the most soy versus people that ate the least had 30% less breast cancer, which is our most common female cancer. The worst part about our logic here is she's saying you need to eat more soy to get the benefits. That's like saying the benefits of exercise are overstated because you're not exercising enough. Now to staple non-dairy foods for vegans are bad for the environment. Starting with number four, it takes 1.1 gallons of water to produce a single almond. Okay, now she's pointing to a single vegan food, but as we know, when you look at a standard vegan diet in its entirety and compare it to standard vegetarian and omnivorous diets, a vegan diet wins out in terms of water. But let's play along here for a second. Well, a glass of almond milk requires 20 gallons of water to produce, not great, but a glass of cow's milk takes 55 to 60 gallons of water to produce. And here's the beauty of almond milk. As a vegan, you don't have to drink it. The new pea-based milk called Ripple claims to use one half of a gallon of water per glass. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's like 120 times more efficient than cow's milk. And I just tried some yesterday. I'm not a huge fan of the long ingredients list and added oil, but the added DHA couldn't hurt. And I have to say, creamier than almond milk. And since they are pulling the almond California drought card, as this truth or drought graphic illustrates, animal feed is the real water sucker in California. Now for number five, avocados need a ton of water too, pointing to their use as a dairy substitute and how it takes 74 gallons of water to produce one pound of avocados. Well, I personally use avocados as a butter replacement, spreading it on bread and stuff. Well, butter, that uses 665 gallons per pound to produce. So that's almost 90% less water. Seriously, this is almost too easy. All right, number six. Soybean production is causing deforestation. Seriously, this is almost hurtful, not only because soy is mainly feed around the world, depending on the source, 70 to 85% of soy becomes feed, but the leading cause of deforestation in the Amazon is livestock, which this report pins at 70% of total deforestation, and Greenpeace Brazil puts it in at 80%. And since a vegan diet doesn't use livestock, well, it might be the best thing you can do for deforestation overnight. Number seven, 94% of US soybeans are genetically engineered. Again, this is mostly a livestock feed issue, but if you're really trying to avoid GMO soy, all you have to do is buy organic or a cheaper option, look for non-GMO verified products. Okay, now to vegans missing out on nutrients. Number eight, vegans don't get enough B12. Yes, every vegan should take B12 in modern times, but we have very good reason to believe that we got all the B12 we needed from untreated water bodies. As this study mentions, levels have been measured in ponds, for example, that could meet your daily needs with just 1.2 milliliters of water or a few drops. 
But that's like the highest measurement. What would be a normal measurement? Well, they did a survey of several lakes and found that a single liter of the two liters of water that you're recommended to drink every day tends to provide well above the recommended daily amount of B12. So in principle, this isn't a time a vegan diet was bad for you. This is one time water treatment was bad for you. Add that to fluoride, where my pineal glands at. Finally, from the Mayo Clinic, everybody over 50 or about a third of the population is recommended to take B12 anyway. Number nine, antioxidant compounds in vegetables prevent absorption of calcium, pointing to phytates as the problem. And has the gall to use another low carb diet pusher, Chris Kresser, as her source. Oh, the dangers of eating vegetables. Seriously, this is amazing. Why do we care about calcium? Mainly because of bones. Well, it just so happens that phytates are amazing for your bones. From this study, those who have low phytate consumption have lower bone density, and the authors go as far as to say, quote, low phytate consumption should be considered an osteoporosis risk factor. Okay, so low phytate is bad, but could it be the high phytate consumption in a vegan diet is bad too? From this study that measured the blood levels of phytate in postmenopausal women found that those who had the highest levels of phytate essentially didn't lose bone mass over a year, well, medium or low phytate women saw 2 and 3% bone loss respectively. And the high phytate group also had around half of the hip fractures of the low phytate group. And we've known for decades that our bodies become accustomed to higher phytate consumption, balancing out an initial calcium dip. So if anything, bone health is a motivating factor to eat more phytates. Down to number 10, plant-based iron is often less bioavailable than meat-based sources, saying that heme iron is about twice as absorbable as plant iron. But why do they say often less bioavailable, not always less bioavailable? Well, as this study shows, if you eat vitamin C with your plant iron, as you should during most meals, it becomes three times as absorbable. And finally, even in diets with a high meat content, heme iron accounts for only 10 to 15% of total iron intake. So not a reason to fear vegan diets. Number 11, antioxidant compounds in vegetables prevent zinc absorption, again pointing to phytates. You know it's bad when you need to attack antioxidants, and there really is this low-carb phytate fear. I don't know where it came from, so let's look at how good phytates are. In addition to just being an antioxidant, which is very healthy, and helping with bone health, as I showed earlier, they also have been pointed to as an anti-cancer treatment and have, quote, shown a strong anti-cancer activity in several experimental models. They've been shown to be a DNA repair stimulant, and high phytate foods, legumes, are considered to be the most effective predictor of longevity of any food. But yes, in addition to tying up and blocking heavy metals like lead, phytates also block zinc, which is why men especially should try and make sure they get enough zinc on a vegan diet. But this is such a small price to pay when looking at the benefits of the phytates and so much less of a burden than worrying about eating cholesterol on foods on an omnivorous diet, which of course contributes to our number one killer, heart disease. Plus, you can always eat zinc-rich foods like pumpkin seeds first thing in the morning or at some other time when you're not eating phytate-rich foods. Problem solved. All right, number 12, vitamin D levels are lower in vegans, saying they can be as much as 74% lower, again, citing Chris Kresser. But they even say that it is hard to get no matter what your diet is, that there are few animal sources and even less plant sources. Okay, first of all, that 74% statistic was just plain wrong. The study that they looked at did not measure blood levels of vitamin D or anything like that. They simply looked at dietary intake. That didn't matter much because even the omnivore intake of vitamin D was one-fifth to one-thirty-fifth as much as the recommended daily amount is, depending on the authority. And it was only one-eighth as much as you get from 10 minutes in the sun. And as the study even says, you can bypass the amount the omnivores ate by eating, you know, three ounces of UV-treated mushrooms. So you're either getting enough from the sun or you're not getting enough no matter what your diet is. Finally, since they were citing it as a risk to bone health, as this study that looked at vegan and non-vegan bone density showed, quote, there was no significant difference between vegans and omnivores. In the end, I think that most of their points backfired, but it provided a good opportunity to talk about the benefits of phytates, among other things. And I guess that's really what you get when you just copy and paste from low-carb blogs. All right, until the next round of good news about your bad habits to get clicks, I will be waiting here patiently to destroy it. Okay, let me know down below if you had any different perspective on any of these times that a vegan diet wasn't good for you. All right, I'll see you next time. Feel free to like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.